Hey, good morning and today as promised I'm going to do a video of the work in progress storage bag. Um, it's took me quite a while to get this done, I've got lots of things going on. Um, as I will point out to you, um, it's not anything professional, it's just basically a guiding hand to help you along. So basically this, this case has got a clear vinyl um, front pocket so you could put your instructions or whatever in there. It's got a nice thick gusset with a zip that goes all the way to the back. It has got double sliders in there and then when you open it up you've got lots of space. I've got my EPPs in here. Um, you've got space for all your spare fabrics. Um, I've got my threads, my needles, scissors. This piece detaches so it's got little magnetic clasps and this piece comes out so this is another storage case that i've got my uh, ones that i've fused i've got my glues my paper pieces and my thimble in there so these have got a zip pocket on each as well so it's a really useful uh, way to store everything together so you're not going to lose it so i found one that i had already got ready to do a video with so I'm not going to put that away properly I'm just going to put everything inside there and hope that I've got all my bits and pieces here so it looks like I've already prepped this so <laughs> fingers crossed that I've got everything right with I've got my instructions here and it's saying um how I do it is I label well how I do it now is I've got each piece down here and I'm labeling the um items so my binding is piece J and K for the handle. So this fabric is my binding fabric and basically it comes in uh, one piece and I ask you to cut the square. This is to make the bias binding because it's going around the top. So I cut off this piece which we will use for the handle. You will have some left over. And then the other piece is a 16 inch square. Now you can do this for any of your bias bindings and you'll get quite a lot out of this piece of fabric. So I've got my square here and basically all I ask you to do is cut down the centre, take one of the half square triangles and place it on the straight edge of the other one. So you've got, I think it's a parallelogram, if you can see there. So you're just joining those two together down that seam and then I will do that for you so you can see what we're doing. Just a quarter inch seam allowance or thereabouts. I'm just guessing. I've not got my quarter inch foot on. Maybe I ought to put that on but just for speed. When I take that out, you can see I've joined that together. It actually looks like that. So you'll think it looks a bit odd, but don't worry, that is absolutely correct. When you open it out, you've got the weird piece like this. So now what you do is you're going to press that open. I'm not going to actually do it because I've got uh, some that's done. And you're going to fold this in half. You can feel the bias on there. And then we're going to lay it down and you're going to cut in I think it's two inch strips all the way along and then join those together so you will have your strips all joined together and that is now the bias tape so that's how you do the binding and the other piece I said is for your handle so I don't know how we do it in there but let's get the handle done so basically I've cut out the handle to the length required I've turned over um, about a centimetre each side and then I've stitched down the side, uh, side seam to the required um, length. I then fold that to the right side, turn it through, and I've got some uh, webbing that we're going to thread down the middle and then just top stitch and that is the handle done. Because it's gonna be like um, sewn on as a patch, you need to finish off both edges. So I'll quickly try and turn that through. I'm not very good with my hands, as I'm sure most of you know. 
I'll do my best to get it turned quickly. Like I said, these videos are just a helping hand. It's, it's nothing professional. It's just to help you through the pattern. It's always difficult to explain in words what I want you to do, whereas actually watching is a lot easier. So we'll get that pushed through. Oops, don't do that. By a core by crop, we will get it through. I'll get some tweezers. This is the webbing piece that we're going to thread down the middle. Might be easier with tweezers. Yeah. Chopsticks help as well. Just press that through. I mean, when you're doing yours at home, you'll be doing it nice and leisurely. After you've made the patterns, uh, sorry, the kits with my fabrics that I provide in the kits, you can then go on to make um, them in whatever fabrics you choose and you can add uh, extra inserts so that you can have um, lots and lots of bits and pieces inside. I do find this a very, very useful um, piece of kit and you'll find that you'll be making lots of them. Why do they never want to turn when you're doing it on film? Anyway, let's see if I can press it out. I'll give it a good shake. I've got more bits and pieces to help me and I'm not using them. I've got turning tools and everything. And I always seem to just muddle through. There we go, see if I can get it there. Come on. I've had both my wrist joints replaced, so they're not the best. But at least I can carry on sewing. That's the main thing for me. Right. Almost there, folks. Almost there we go. So I'm going to give that a quick press and I'm just using my mini iron so that I can stay in one place. I like to just sit down and just carry on, watch YouTube videos as I'm going along. Right, there we go. Finally, we've got it through. So I'm just going to give that a quick press, trying to get that seam down the centre. And then I'm going to insert the webbing and because it's a thick webbing it should just slide in like that and then I'm going to stitch all the way around catching those edges in nice and neatly just make sure that the webbing is not coming out of the other side and then your strap is finished and it gives it a nice strength to that strap it's not going to be flimsy Push all the edges in, get the ends level, and then we're going to stitch all the way around. I'm going to turn my uh, stitch length up to about three. Whiz down the sides. Took all the bits, fraying bits of webbing in at the end. side and that is my strap done yay there we go so there we've got our strap all done so let's see what the next bit we're going to do is um done the binding we're going to do the Right, I told you to quilt the pieces together. That is the main uh, bag. I think it's the A and B pieces with the wadding in between. Now I've already got that done. I did it on my embroidery machine. So that's done for me. Um, what's the next bit I need to do? Put the sliders on the thinner zip. Right, I've already got that done. So it looks like we're actually making the inner part first. So, right, I've got some of this done. I've got the waddings 
all fused on to the back and then I've stitched around this um, to hold all that in place. So you can see it gives it a nice bit of um, weight to that. I've got one end done and I'm going to, as you can see, this is how it's going to go. So we've got the zip at that end and then we've got another one at this end. So I've already done one side so I can get on and show you how we do the other side. So I've got my zip with the slider on. I'm going to lay my vinyl down. I'm going to put my zip foot on. I'll move my needle across and I'm going to lay the zip with the um, zipper side down onto the vinyl. You can just about see that lining up the raw edges. I'm going to stitch all the way across there. Now you might find it easier to actually do it with the vinyl on top. I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, that's easier because the, um, I'll just reduce that stitch length down. The um, vinyl can stick to the bed of your machine. If you find that's happening, you could um, put a, a sheet of copy paper on there or some tissue paper. So you're actually stitching onto the zip, uh, sorry, this tissue paper, then just tear it away. Right, so I've stitched across there. What we need to do now is just flip that zip up and press the vinyl to the inside. So you can actually see through it, but it's it's nice and neat. And then we're just going to top stitch on the very edge of the zip. You can see it through. Just hold that down with my little tool. Pull the vinyl so it's all nice and flat and then just top stitch. So when I take that out now, you've got your zip there. So this other piece, I'm not sure what uh, letter it is, but we're going to fold that in half. So we've got a fold line there and we're going to place that fold line onto the opposite side of the zip and that's going to form the last part of our zip bag. So I'm just going to stitch that quite close to the fold line. Try and keep it nice and neat. If you want to pin or clip, feel free to do that, but I wouldn't clip or, oh, sorry, I wouldn't pin through the vinyl because it will leave marks. So we've stitched that in place. Now, if you wanted to, for a decorative uh, feel, you could top stitch again um, a quarter of an inch to the side, but I'm not going to do that for speed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this onto the other piece. You could have it either way. So you could have the patterned fabric showing through, which is rather nice, but I quite like the contrast of the planar fabric, even though it has got a pattern on it. Um, showing through and then on the back we've got that because it's going to actually fold that way so I'm just going to whiz around there in fact I'm going to put my other foot on because I find it easier you could use a walking foot if you wanted to put my needle back to the center and we're just going to make sure that these zip pulls are in the middle so we're not going to catch them I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside edge I'll put a large stitch on just so it's a bit quicker the fabric's all nice and flat we are going to round the corners of course it's easier to do the binding around the corner with a bias binding so we'll whiz down the opposite side again if you feel happier pinning uh, uh, clipping, sorry, do that. If you've got any um, difference in the levels of your fabric, you can just trim those off so they're all level. Oh, my bobbin's run out. Just change my bobbin. Got some already wound, so it's 
not too bad. Let's put a new bobbin in. We'll just uh, go back down this edge just to catch that in again. I'm not going to go right back, but just to here. At least I didn't get all the way around, eh? I've done that before. And then back to where we started. So you can see um, it's, well, it's just a little bit hanging over there. So just trim that off so it's all nice and level. And then it's just a case of putting your binding on there. Oh, actually it's not, no. What I, I think I do do it in this pattern, also I'm gonna cut this off level, is um, I do stitch across the center here. And the reason I do that is so that if you put something in, this side it's not going to go all the way through to the other side so I'm just folding that I've got a crease line if you prefer on the back draw a line and follow the line obviously I'm trying to get this done speedily so this is how I'm going to do it so now we've got that dividing line on there um, I've also got the piece that is going to go across here which is going to make a handle and the piece that is going to clip into the um, bag so what I need to do is I've just got some of the um, stiff interfacing in there I've pressed about a, an in, uh, sorry, a centimeter over this side of it and then I've folded that over and the raw edge there I've turned in to meet that edge so it's all going to be level but I do need to finish the edges off do I need to finish the edges off? and I need to put um, a clasp in magnetic clasp so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to see if I can peel a little bit off because I shouldn't have put it right up to end yeah it peels off all right so I'm just going to cut a tiny bit off and I'm going to turn that in like so so that is actually going to finish i'll show you that raw edge but before i do that i'm going to put the magnetic clasp on so you can see now that raw edge is all nice and enclosed but before i do that i'm going to put on my magnetic clasp so on this one this is the thicker part of it and i've done this lots and lots of times before so all i'm going to do is put one of the washers now I'm going to put it centrally and I'm going to put it about um, just over half an inch up. The reason being when I stitch it, I don't want to catch my um, needle. So I'll show you what I've done in a second. Right. So I put on that metal washer. I don't know if you can see it because it's yellow. And you just yeah you can just see those yellow marks on there that's where i'm going to cut so i'm just going to pop a little blade into there both edges i'm going to use some fabric glue to just give that a little bit of strength also it stops it fraying push the prongs through from the right side you can see those coming through i've still got the fabric glue on there so i'm going to put the washer over the top of that and then close those prongs in there and that is how easy it is to put in magnetic clasps make sure they're nice and tightly closed you don't want these coming open and then repeat on the opposite side push the um, prongs through from the right side to the wrong side put the washer over the top I've got the fabric glue on there close the prongs in nice and tightly top 
on my glue so it doesn't dry up. And then I'm going to do the same on this side, just peel a tiny bit back and cut about a quarter of an inch off. There we go. Fold those row edges in and then stitch all the way around it. And that will form the handle, but also the strap for inserting it into the case. You don't have to put that, that, that on if you don't want to. You could just actually uh, put it inside and leave it. But I do think it, it adds a nice uh, feature to the bag. So there we've got all the row edges enclosed. I'm going to stitch around. I may have to put my um, zipper foot back on so I don't hit the clasp. Um, but I will do that just to make sure. Move my needle to the side. In fact, I'll do it to the opposite side. Will I? Yeah. No, I want to put it to the next side. I'll make my mind up eventually. There we go. So now we're stitching all the way around that edge. Increase my stitch length. Level this side up. Fold the raw edges in. a nice looking handle you can see now it just got straight past that um, clasp because we've put the the clasp in about about half an inch And there we have got our um, handle with our magnetic clasps on. So what we need to do is this is going to go onto the bag and we're just going to join it in the middle here. So we're going to leave these ends free because we want to lift it up to put the binding on. So I'm just going to put it over the, that stitch line that we've got. There it is. Centre it. And I'm going to stitch it. I'm not going to measure it, I'm just going to do it by eye. So I'm stitching it about two inches from the edge. It will tell you in the instructions how far to stitch it. So I'm going to go back and forth a few times. And then repeat about two inches from the opposite edge. Trim the threads off and there you have got your little um, insert with a little handle on and your pocket, your clasps. So that's going to just clip into the side of the bag like that. Now the tops, we're going to round those off. So I like to do it by eye, but if you've got one of those circular tools or anything, um, a glass, just draw around that and trim the corners to it. If you're not confident, just cutting it. But I just like to just give it a little trim there. And it's only like a gentle round so that um, the bias binding will just curve around there. So that's that side done. I'm just going to do the same with the other side. There we go. So all this needs doing now is binding and that part is finished. So we'll go back to the um, bag and what we've got here is the front part. So I have got my fusing, fusible interfacing on the uh, wrong side of this piece. Um, I've got my backing piece, so that's going to go to the back of this. I can stitch all the way across that. 
sorry, all the way around that. So I'm going to put the loose fabric to the bottom. I just find that easier. And I'm going to whiz all the way around. Just make it so it all holds in place. Just gone round it with a quite a big stitch length. But it's just gonna I've actually missed quite a bit of it. It's gonna hold all those layers together, but it's not if you don't catch them in. Is my thread gone? Come and threaded, that's why it's not caught. You didn't tell me that, did you? Eh? It won't stitch if it's not threaded. Right, there we go. I'll try again. stitch most of the way around I'm trying to trick me just make sure you keep it all nice and level as you're doing this because it can ride up a little bit with the walking foot not being on right, there we go so now we've got it all done so the next part is the zipper again still got my zipper foot on so that's fine so it's another small zip this one um, is the chunky zip goes around the outside so what i'm going to do is as we did before this is the um zip panel and it's folded down the middle and we're just going to stitch the put the fold against the zip teeth just to the side of it and we're going to top stitch just down this edge my stitch length back down as we're constructing so keep that level if you've not got a lot of space at the side of your zipper foot stop with your needle down raise the foot and pull that zipper pull past it you'll get it a lot neater um, you sometimes get a bump in it if you try to go around it that's that attached so now we need to put the vinyl onto the other side of that which is just a case of putting it zip pull or right side down against the vinyl the vinyl hasn't got a wrong on the right side so that's fine and we're just going to stitch across the top of that keeping the edges together now i've put the vinyl onto my onto the bed of my machine so i'm hoping it's going to play nicely If you do find it sticking, you can just help it along a little bit or, like I said, put some tissue paper or copy paper uh, under the vinyl. It will rip off easy enough. Or if you've got a Teflon foot, but it's a zipper foot we're using, so I don't think I've seen a zipper Teflon foot. there we go pull that out and then fold the zip up and put the vinyl down so I'm just going to crease that with my finger and we're going to top stitch just on the very edge where the zip tape ends and I can increase the stitch length on that so fold the vinyl down and then top stitch in place. Okay. So 
now you can see we've got that all together now this bit here we can cut off if you've got your zip that's coming open at this end what you need to do is carefully open the zip up and go down as close to the edge as you dare without pulling it off so you can just get your finger behind and then zip that back up and you can now just stitch across that don't go too far though you'll be very angry with yourself or me for telling you to do it so i'm just stitching across so it can't come undone now so now you can see i've stitched across it there right so that is the um zipper complete so i now need to decide which way i want facing out and i'm going to have this side again facing out i think it looks quite nice but if you wanted to you could put the same fabric on as what's on the inside i just like that contrast so i'm going to do it this way i'm going to um stitch it from the top all the way around and if there's any anything hanging over the edges you can just trim that flush off like all this plastic here i've got a little bit of plastic at the bottom as well so you, it might pay you to um actually clip these together to keep them all nice and straight the reason i'm not is one i'm not really a, a pinner um but two i'm trying to get this done quickly i'm aware it can be long videos Hold it all flat and we want to round these edges as well so um, we'll do that afterwards. I just think they look really nice when they're all rounded. Stitch on the edge. Keep smoothing it down. And now you can see we've got that all enclosed. We can just trim off the XX, X, excess plastic. We'll get there in the end. And while I'm doing that, I could just round the top a little bit. So you can always use something that's round if you want to. We're not we're not rounding the bottom edge. That's going to be straight. I'll get rid of all this. I'll clean it all up later. And that is the front part of the um, whip bag done. So we've got the front part there. We've got the back there, and the um, other back there. So this sorry, the base there and the back there. That's it. Front, back, and base. And we've got our handle. So the next thing we need to do is the gusset, which um, I'm not sure how I did that. I think I cut it, yeah, I cut it five inches and then cut it down the middle so that you got two halves to it. And I have started this just to give me a bit of um, a bit of a head start. So what I've done is I've put the wadding and the main fabric together. I've laid the zip on there right side down so it's right sides together and i've stitched all the way along the length now you'll see i have got two zip sliders on here so i put one on from this end and one on from this end so they meet in the middle so they're both going to open up i find that a lot nicer on a, on a bag so what we're going to do now is take the line in to that part and we're going to place it directly on top of the zip so basically you're covering the zip up so you can't see it at all but it is sandwiched inside the um sandwiched inside there so we're going to turn this over so we can see from that side and we're going to top stitch all the way down on top of those stitches we've just done still got my zipper foot on so that's good so then you've got two red layers of stitching on there if you want to go ahead and clip or pin So line it all up and then stitch on those stitches that were sewn previously. Now 
That way you know you're not going to have any stitches showing. Just make sure these are all nice and level, and they are. Keep them together. I find that having something to just hold my work with, I find that really beneficial. Right, so we're going to take that out and we're going to open up that lining and put those raw edges together. So if you want to, you can clip open. I will put a, a clip on just to hold it so you could go down there with an iron but to be honest I'm going to top stitch so I'm just going to pull it to the edge as I saw down and I'm going to top stitch about a centimeter away because it's quite big and bulky I don't want it too close and I do want quite a big stitch length so I've got three nearly four 3.8 anything from three and a half would be fine so as I'm stitching down here, I'm going to be holding these edges together so that there's nothing tucked under here, just moving that out. Reposition your hands. Again, just check that you've got it all nice and neat and nothing caught. that all the way down see if I'd done this on my Benina my Benina has a walking foot attached to the zipper foot but a lot of you out there won't have one so I've done it on my Janome so that basically we've got the same um, sort of feet as most other people But just to show you, it can be done. Oh, it's not sewing. Oh. I think it's because I'm on my long thread. It's not missed much, so I caught it. probably heard me talking about the banana. Right, so go back to where it stops stowing and then back tap a little bit and then carry on. I use so much of the Orofil, um it's like a white off-white thread that I bought it in a huge cone so this is the big cone, sometimes because you're using it differently, it doesn't always like going through. But the small ones I use up so quick. Right, so there you can see, I'll just cut those threads off. That is now holding that all back. I always recommend top stitching your zips if you can. Now we need to, do, <coughs> excuse me, do the same on the other side. Let's have a drink of water. So, I've got my three layers here. I'm going to take the lining off. I'm going to put the wadding and the main fabric together. If you were doing this in a directional fabric, you would have to look. This is not a directional fabric, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to take the right side, which is the fabric side, and place it against the other end of the zip here. So place that on top, lining up these raw edges, and I'm going to stitch down that side. Reduce my stitch length back down because I'm constructing. Line that up and stitch down there. If you wanted to, you could turn it over. Yeah, I think I will, just to make it easier for you to see. So this time I'm actually going to stitch onto the zip. 
So I've still got them right sides together, but I can see where the zip is. So there's like a little um, herringbone down the zip. So if you can see down that. Hi, welcome to part two of the working process storage bag. Now, I didn't say that there were two parts to this. Uh, basically what's happened is the I filmed the first part and for some reason my iPad stopped filming and I lost half of it. So I'm trying to go back to where I thought it was because it was a week ago now. I've had all the orders in between and it's, sorry, it's absolutely boiling today. So I'm really hot and bothered, but I'm going to try and get this done because I know there's a lot of you out there who's wanting to be, uh, to get it um, finished. And I can't say I blame you because it is an absolutely lovely project to do. So, right, I think if I'm right, I got onto the gusset. And basically what I've got here is one side that was done. So you can see I've got the lining got my zip and I've got my main fabric and I have put the zip I've actually opened that up sorry and I've stitched top stitched down here to hold that in place so this is what we've got so then what I did I laid the zip down and on top of that I laid the fabric right side down and then I laid the wadding on top of that so we have the other side of the zip, the fabric, and then the wadding, and I stitched down here. So this is where I believe I got up to. So what I'm going to do is take the lining, place that at the other side, all the way down on there. So I've got the um, zip in between and then the lining wadding and main fabric so if i actually stitch that from this side i can see the stitches so that's what i'm going to do so i'll start from this end because i've got my zip zipper foot on my machine ready and i'm going to start sewing so i'm just going to move the camera around a little bit so hopefully you can see what i'm doing and i'm going to stitch that in place there we go it's better to do it this way because you can actually see where you've stitched before. I've got one of my little porky tools or whatever you want to call them, stilettos. Just as a helping hand, I find that it really helps me. Uh, so lay all the layers together and just follow those stitches. really enjoy doing this project it's a nice easy project and you're going to do more than one i've got about five or six now there we go so i'm going to take that out i'm going to open it up so i pull the lining flat pull the main fabric at the opposite side so you could press that if you wanted to, but basically just holding that out, laying that flat, and then you've got the sandwich in between and both linings on the other side. So what I'm going to do now is top stitch down this side here to keep all those in place. I'm going to turn around a stitch length up to about three and a half. Uh, stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the zip keep on pulling all those nice and level you can always cut it down trim it down afterwards there we go so line up all the edges pull them out lay them down flat Go. 
There we go. So while I've got this here, I'm just going to trim those edges flat there. And the same at this side. And then what we have is our gusset done. Now I know in the last video I had got my um, handle sewn on, so I will go back to that now. But I just wanted to show you that bit done. So I've got my handle sewn on and I've got one of the clasps sewn on. I've got my other one here ready to sew on and it goes on the back like so with the clasp facing the zip. So I'm going to swap my foot, put a normal foot on and I'm going to stitch that in place. Move my needle back to the centre. I'm just going to take it steady going over that because it is quite a lot of layers. So go as slow as you need to. It's no rush. We placed it where the zip is, so it's going on top of the zip. Steady going back. This is what holds the um, inner pockets in place. Right. So in, in my bags, I really like to have... Um, all the seams enclosed so that's my little tab sewn on so what I want to do is get the take the lining away get the wadding and the main fabric and place it right side down on top of where we've just stitched place the lining on the opposite side and again stitch those in place so you've got the um, clasp sandwiched in between so I'm just going to stitch about a centimeter again I'm going to take it slowly I've got my stitch back to a normal stitch length go slow over that zip part in the middle you could put a thicker needle on for this a jean zipper uh, sorry a jeans needle would go nice. So now you can see, actually I've not caught a bit in there, so I'm going to turn it over. Because you've got such a lot of layers, just check that you have caught it all in. I'm just going to go over that bit there, make sure I catch it all in. When you get to the central bit, just take it steady. And actually it's better to go over the central bit again because a few more stitches is going to help hold it in place. So there, I've gone over the whole lot again. Now, when I pull the lining back and then pull the top back, you can see all my raw edges are enclosed nice and neat. So what I'm going to do is turn it around, bring the main side up, the right side up, and we're going to, what this is what they call a burrito. So all this in the middle here, I'm going to fold up out of the way, just roll it up, and then bring the lining over the top. So all that is rolled up in between. That is gonna give me a lovely, neat finish. So just hold those in place, or um, you can clip it. And I'm gonna stitch across all the layers again. Take it slowly again, because it is quite thick. It will be worth it. You'll have a beautiful bag when you've finished. So take it slowly when you get to the middle bit. Sorry, you can't see, I know. I might actually sew across it twice as I did before. But I think I'm going to turn it over just to make sure I've caught all the layers in. So turn it over. I have caught them all in, but I'm still going to go over it one more time just to give it some extra strength. Slowly over the middle bit. There we go. Right, so now what we need to do is just push all those bits out of the middle and you should end up with a nice round shape. 
this is basically the sides of your bag so turn it to the right side and you'll see there you've got your gusset at the bottom and your handle at the top and all we need to do now is put the right at uh, the back and the front on here now i like to have the handle part at the back so this is what i'm going to do for the back if you've got any bits that you need to trim off like there you can see it's just a little step you could actually trim all that flat i would recommend you take it to the table and um, do it all nice and neat i am just doing it by by eye um, because obviously i don't want to leave the camera so all the edges just trim those level this just basically makes sure you catch all the edges in when you um clip your bits together and then we're just going to bind it and that is finished so i'll just quickly trim off this side here just to make sure i catch everything in on all these little bits especially with the waddings i put inside cushions right so that is my um gusset ready to clip in place so what i think what i might do is i will just do one of the sides so i'll just do the um the back because the front done exactly the same i've got my two flat bits there and my rounded bits here so i'm going to fold it in half and i'm going to put a pin at the top and i'm going to put a pin at the bottom and i'm going to do the same with the um body of the bag sorry i like to put the just said i like to do it this way i like to put the um handle to the back so i'm going to find the center of the gusset there and put a pin in or a clip whichever you prefer same at the top find the center at the top pop a pin in there and ouch see clips don't do that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to clip this in place or pin so i'm going to get clips because they don't hurt as much so i'm going to line up the pin with the pin on the back there take those out and that will be my first clip uh, my other two i'm going to do this so i can get these out of the way so line those two up take my pins out and clip that so there we've got the two done and then we're going to evenly distribute the other clips all the way around so i will get on with that so it's just a case of lining them all together and putting a clip all the way around the edges take your time with this because you want to make sure that it's all nice and neat and they're all level there we go so all the way to the bottom putting your clips on and then when you get to the corner easy all the way in go around the corner and carry on there we go continue on round to the other side and you're just basically going to do the same for the front so you don't need me to do it twice obviously um you will do that yourself at home but you don't need to watch it done twice because it's exactly the same and we're going to stitch that by machine and then the binding we're going to um sew on by machine but then hand stitch in place i just think that gives it a neater look keeping all those edges nice and even all the way around back to where we started from and then you can sew that in place so now you can see it's taking the look 
of your bag so you would do exactly the same with the front section so i'll put those pins out it clicks out of the way and what i'm going to do is i like to stitch from the um back here so i'm going to fold the handle and all that out of the way lay it down nice and flat as you can see here and stitch now if you've got a walking foot you could put a walking foot on and i actually would um, but I'm trying to save a little bit of time, so I'm just going to make sure all those seams are out of the way. You could do a bigger stitch, because then you could lower it when you've got it all in position and go around again. Take your clips out as you go and stitch all that in position. So I'm doing a stitch about a quarter of an inch. Use your little tool to, excuse me, hold everything in place. Keep all those edges level as you go in. As you come to the corner just tuck all those layers underneath and ease it around but making sure you keep that nice shape take the clips out go around that corner If, I think if you have got a walking foot, um, you'll find it feeds it through nice because there is a lot of layers. It's not a problem going through it, um, but it will make sure that the uh, top and bottom is feeding through at the same time. Also, if you've got a needle down function, use that so that it always stops with your needle down. Coming round to the corner of the base. Just want to make sure I catch all the fabric in. Took it all underneath, and now I've gone round that corner. See a lot there but trust me it is not a problem going through it all it's easier to do it this way and then bind it than it is to try and turn it to the inside and then turn it out it gives it a lot, lot nicer finish for a case to do it this way keep all the edges nice and even clips and then going back to where we started there we go right so if i take that out put all my clips back into my little bowl set that out and there you can see we've got that nice shape all done on the inside you can see all the edges are nicely enclosed so now what we need to do is bind it so you could go around again with your um, stitch length shorter but i'm going to do that as i bind it but if you want to make sure nothing comes undone it won't hurt you to do an extra um layer on there so i've got the binding that um i prepared in the first one what we're going to do is just fold over just a little bit quarter of an inch Fold it in half, keeping those edges level, so there's no raw edges. I don't like to iron mine um, in half, so I just like to fold it. I think you've got more play with it if you do it this way. So we're going to start on the bottom, and this time I'm going to start with the gusset on top. So I'm going to lay that down, lining up all those seams 
at the edge there. And I'm not going to clip because I find it easier to do this like this. And I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edges again. Basically, you're trying to make sure that none of those stitches are showing that you've just stitched. So going over the top, preferably. Fold as you go, but basically you're just keeping those raw edges all even. Coming up to the first corner, so I'm just easing it around. Now this is, um, it's not a bias binding, but it's not a problem because we've got rounded corners, so it's going to just slowly go around. So just fold the edges in. Take it slowly around the corner. Use your needle down function. Coming around now. Keep your edges even and carry on stitching all the way around. There we go. So basically what I'm doing is keep trying to keep all this nice and flat. Fold the gusset in and we're going around the top curved edge now. So use your little pokey, whatever you've got. Quarter of an inch away from the edge. along the top or take it steady there is no rush when you're doing projects like this just enjoy it and then you've got a beautiful project when you've finished again we're coming up to the next corner now well, it's a curve it's not a corner so needle down function again, take it steady around the corner, curve, fold your binding as you go, there we go, Coming up to the last curve. Edges together. Easing it around the curve. Just follow the stitches you've previously done. Keeping it as flat as possible. There we go. And then when you get to where you started, just let it go over the top of that for about an inch and trim it off. There we go. Stitch over the edge and then take it out. So now what you've got is you've got your binding all on there. What I would recommend you do is take some scissors and just trim especially on those curves trim some of that excess wadding off you'll find that the binding will lay a lot nicer that way so there we go so what you need to do now is fold the binding to the right side and hand stitch that in place so just fold it all the way over and basically what you're going to do is bring this edge over the top where you've just stitched, I'll put a clip on so you can see it. There we go. And over the top again, covering those stitches up. And you're going to do that all the way around. And then you're going to hand stitch that in place. And what you're going to end up with is your bound case all done and then do the same on the front section here 
and then the only other thing we need to do now is get the um that's not the piece we did for the inside the little insert that we did is this one so i'm going to quickly show you how we do that um what i'm going to do is i'm going to face place it to the back and i'm going to clip these straps in place so that they don't get caught oh i wondered where that was so they don't get caught in my um sewing it's the top for my own picker my best friend that right so what i'm going to do is take some of the binding oops, do the same as we did before turn in a little bit quarter of an inch or so is fine fold the long edges together as such place this um i'm going to start where the handle is and we're going to stitch about a quarter of an inch. So I've back tack to um, reinforce that. Lay all the edges together. Now you'll see I'm lifting it up. The reason I'm doing that is because we've got the vinyl on this side and I don't want it to get stuck on the bed of the machine. If you've got a um, Teflon foot, you could put that on. So we're coming up to the curves. Make sure your zip pull is in the middle so you're not going to um, catch the puller with the needle. Just ease it around the corners. Easing that around as you go. my zip pulls out of the way all the raw edges need to be aligned again slowly around the edges teflon foot will help with this but it's definitely worth doing my zip pull is in the middle so I'll check again coming up to another curve edges level easing it around the curve Steady as you go around. I think my bobbin is playing up, so I'll just. Yep, it is. I'll just turn it off. When it's done that, because it's a computerised machine, it will not like to restart without taking this out. So I'll just take that out, start it back up, take my bobbin out threads got caught at the bottom this happens don't worry about it so i'm just going to put another bobbin in these things happen i'll make sure i'm putting it in the right way there we go put my thread underneath and off we go again i will leave things like that in um, because I do think it's helpful to see that they happen all the time. I could tell that something wasn't uh, quite right. I could tell by the noise it was making. So I'll continue all the way around. I 
this one i don't mind um doing this by machine but the big case the sorry the outside of the case i do like to do it by hand but this one i don't mind so i will show you how i do it by machine so on to the last bit just going sewing down i'm going to trim it off about an inch past um where we started and sew over the top there we go so right so when i take that out i've got my binding all the way around now on these corners especially i'm going to just give i'm going to trim a little bit off just on the corners and that should help me turn it to the right side should be right on the straight bits let's get rid of all that now what we're going to do is just flip the binding to the right side you can press it but be very careful if you press in anywhere near the um, vinyl We've got those clipped in the way, so I think I can move them out of the way now, make it lay a bit flatter. So bring the binding over the stitches, as you can see there, and we're going to top stitch along the very edge of that binding. So just hold it all in place as you stitch. When you get to the um, corner, just try to push back a little bit, pull the binding so that it's going to lay a bit, a bit flatter um, because it will naturally want to pull right in. So just pull it back a little bit and stitch it in place. Use the little tool or a pair of tweezers, just hold that in place there. Or if you prefer, stitch it by hand. I struggle with my hand stitching because I've had the joints in my hands replaced. So I do struggle with the hand stitching. But if you're all right with it, you may want to stitch it by hand, which by all means, go ahead. It will give you a nice, neat finish. But this is the final stage of the little whip storage bag so you've got somewhere to store all your work in progress <laughs> that's why i've got so many i've got quite a lot of works in progress but i do like to start a new project and have a few different ones on the go so i can swap and change when i get free time I'm just going to trim some of these loose edges. If you find that it won't pull over where your stitches are, then just trim a bit of the um, bag away so it's actually wide enough to, to pull over. It will do it, um, but just in case yours has gone a bit wide on your first seam. I'm just pulling that over. Now, sometimes I like to get an unpicker and hold the bottom one down put the unpicker in the top one but be very careful that you don't actually pull too hard that you cut it and i just find that i can pull that over like that and that will hold it in place nicely be very careful that you don't um tear it find that it's really nice for pulling the top binding over to make them in line hand stitching does get a really neat finish on the, this part of it but um because i struggle with hand stitching so just take it steady this is the joining so it is quite thick And 
carry on all the way around. So again, I'll come into a corner, so I'm just pulling this back until it gives a nice, neat finish on the top. This is quite a lengthy project, this one, but it's one that, um, you know, I've really enjoyed doing. So, as the saying goes, enjoy the journey. So just pull it back a little bit so it's not all pulling into the center and then curve it around there we go go back to where you started and then you've got your little inserted pockets as well or your pocket inserts whichever you want to call it. There we go. So I take that out. You can see now when I fold the, so that is the um, binding all done. You've got your two zipper pockets for storing little goodies. Um, that will take on its own memory eventually, but this then clips inside the bag. I've got one here to show you, which is full of my bits and pieces. But if you want to make more of these, go ahead. Uh, you can make more to go inside, as I have on some of mine. I've never put it back in properly, but you can see I've got my um, English paper piecing in here. And this just clips into the bottom and that is your work in progress bag there so thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next project